can. Maybe we can just go. No harm. Um, welcome. To <laughs> exactly. The Barrel Vision Podcast. Uh, that was one of our smoothest, best intros off screen. Um, yeah. So the idea here. to talk about the idea of possibly things that might be possible. Things that might be right well no there's some things so that very happened vain, since the last episode right i mean we've got a, the main thing is the below decks post I, I, it's the only thing um but the, the, <laughs> you know it's 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 all sunshine and rainbows it's just not it's just not the clearest day uh and that's because ghost ship are actually on like an extended bank holiday like this week um so we won't be hearing anything this week um which makes me wonder where to start because i've got a list of like the smaller topics we can talk about and one of them is like when we might actually start hearing stuff. And I guess we should probably start with Wait, that because. Was what? that this week just passed or the week coming up? This week. Uh, right. Which this I guess. Week. I don't know the exact dates, but that's like end of uh, June, July. What's the third month? This April? Is, this is March. We're in March. We're right at the end of March. It's about to be April, March. which is the fourth yeah. month. And yeah, but that yeah. makes me think about, you know when we might actually start seeing stuff from season five right if you look towards when um teasers used to start before i've noticed it's roughly two months roughly two months and which means you know it could actually be up to about halfway through april but still i think we're right on the cu- i think we, we are actually right on the cusp of starting to see things like and obviously you know there's the idea that we'll see more they talk about the open development thing with like development blogs and stuff but i just mean like just teasers because I like them, and I think it's, it's not going to be long till they many, start happening. You know, how many things they they seem to like have teasable, right? Like there there is going to be a lot of things to tease. First of all, you could move a clock, and that's like twelve weeks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like if needs must, add the boom. <laughs> um, you've also got you know a, a new um, right game mode, which I'm sure you can tease in like three or four different ways as you reveal it right like just like whatever it is you're mining whatever yeah. it is helps you mine like something like that right um maybe just like look on the the, the map and the thing and see the icon like and chances are there's probably another thing in the hub i mean they maybe well, yeah not and also at least at, i think the, uh, i think at least three enemies right i think that's what most people divide upon yeah at least three. Yeah, I, mean, I think yeah, most. I, I, I'm pretty that. comfortable. It's going to be more than three. I'm thinking more in the range of four to five because I, I personally think that that point on the list um, is referring to some new generic enemies combined with themed enemies. But they also might be the same thing, which is something that I didn't realize I wanted to talk about. Is the idea of um, how much season five might be? How much I hope they're really taking the approach of the content, the main content that's added is a mixture of being themed for the season but also done in a way where it it is it's still just kind of normal you know what i mean because like, you think escort duty yeah. could have been that for example escort duty you know involving this big omer and heartstone fight that's like a big weird like themed part of the mission but it's still oh i mean obviously we don't like it but it's still overall a normal mission type um which is why yeah. I, I i hope they're just going to take the approach of having something occur in the game narrative right if there is one that causes these things to need to be done that causes new enemies to appear causes a, a new type of mining operation that we have to do you know th- there's a reason why we weren't doing this mission type before but that doesn't mean it's like so heavily themed that it can't be treated normally either i mean i think that's exactly what we want to and it sounds like it we think about the philosophies they've talked about of applying to this new mission type it sounds like one that's not going to be too hard to wrap your head around you know i mean we talk about the very basic idea it should be able to be in assignments from day one right <laughs> things like that yeah. um like and also e- all the enemies even if they are uh like part of the season theme they should also, also they should also be made to be part of the normal pool as well maybe i think enemies is a little bit different though because we do have the bubbles of enemies like the rivals in the rock box and i don't hate those bubbles of enemies to be honest but oh I don't know, man. I'm, I'm realizing that I'm excited for season five, and that's not gonna. That's only gonna be increased when they actually start showing stuff, which I think it's gonna be within two weeks. I think I, I would say it's pretty comfortable we, within the first half. I think we're gonna start seeing stuff within the first half of April. Is what I'm saying. Um, what is tomorrow? The 
No, Monday is the 1st of April, right? Yeah, which is I April Fool's, like... by the way. Um, yeah, uh, which we should be doing a stream on that day. Um, so be sure to tune in about 12 o'clock our time, be. whatever it is for you guys. Um, we said half 12. But all right, then that. You don't want to um... grossly mislead people. We don't want to. <laughs> Um, but it's kind of like I think you can really expect to see something within the month of April, yes. right? Yeah, obviously. Like um, by the end of it, maybe latest is I think quite possible. Um, even if it's not even a, a teaser necessarily, I feel like they're probably gonna like start dropping well, stuff just more casually. So the first thing that's always revealed, um, and this is going off the normal season rigmarole obviously we're expecting it to be i think our expectation is that it's basically going to be the same but with some like articles like accompanying the accompanying the season the teaser season as it were but what it usually starts with is just like the obscured version of the key art that's what it always starts with um i think i think that yeah. is every time actually except season one where it started with a weird like image of the caretaker but it was still pretty much the same thing it was a teaser of the caretaker like shrouded and then obviously it's been that way season two three and four i think season three is probably the easiest one to reference because that's when it was like it was the key art but it was behind the goggles basically something like that and it would have the release date hidden in it that's the thing though they always start the teasers i've realized now with the release date actually locked in um yeah, and I think well, maybe they, they kind of need to know how many teasers they need, right? I think that's yeah, I think that's actually true. Like how out. many? Yeah, I think they do plan it in terms of like weeks, kind of. Maybe I don't know. Because you know, season they're, four, the well, think about season four though. How like two or three of them were the same thing. Um, yeah, but like all of them, they, they weren't like nothing, right? They were they were recorded videos, um, with like some editing, some sound done, right? They they they're not. Like things that they do on in the week, I imagine they're probably like some of them are pre-done. So I don't know. They might they might already be and have recorded some of the teasers, right? I think that's quite possible at this point in time. Um, yeah, I mean, so we right don't now. So we're off, not. But... We don't know that much, but I, I could imagine, right? Um, I, I could kind of imagine of the guy be... like making overclocks. That is Antus, by the way. Like actually, I could kind of imagine him recording teasers himself like well or maybe not him i guess test while testing them you probably would do that or something because i suppose that is one of the ones that we're expecting um teasers relating to the overclock so then there's a question of would all of them be able to be used in a teaser though um probably not all of them um e like there's probably going to be at least a couple where even if you use them on enemies you wouldn't inherently be able to see but you would hope that most of them would be teasable in some way I think is the idea. Like I'd say at least three quarters of them should be fairly teasable, like concepts, I suppose. Um, but we really don't know. Like we really don't know the kind of the principles that they're applying to these overclocks. Like when you think about it, we have just been guessing. Like the idea that there's probably not going to be any cleans, for example, unless they're like special powder style cleans, and that might not be true. Yeah. I, I think it's true, but it's still an assumption that we've made. Um, so we really yeah. just don't know. The and that's the kind of stuff I want to start on... hearing about soon. Like, we talked about it, right? The yeah. Below Decks about... Because these overclocks, most most of them are prototypes, right? From from before Season 1. Or they were made for Season 1. Um, it was originally an idea to have some new overclocks for the old weapons in Season 1. Uh, and, and so the only ones that didn't exist before then would have been, like, the ones for the Gen 3 weapons. Um, so... There could easily be a below deck that sort of tracks the journey of. The, I really want to see that kind of thing. And frankly, um, I think there should be another below decks on Deep Rock at some point soon, especially given that season five is sort of gearing up to be in the public consciousness. Um, but obviously, there yeah. is a below deck that happened recently, um, which would be a good segue unless you had something to say. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> oh, thanks. Uh, you're welcome. You can now segue. Yeah, well, I found out that the word segue is not spelled how you'd imagine as well. That was a really disappointing fact. Spell? I told you about this. It's spelled S-E-G-U-E. Oh, wait. S-U-G-U-E. So it's like segue. Segue. Like, yeah, it's just... 
Yeah. I don't like it. Some fancy pants word. Yeah, even though a segue is a mode of transportation, and it's like, you know, you're transporting from one topic to the other. Um, that topic being a recent Below Dex post on, on Rogal. <laughs> um, which is basically going to... I think it's the, it's the biggest thing that happened um, outside of us, I would say, over the last couple of weeks, because, I mean, how could it not be? Um, but it is still like a work. It's still like a work in progress, like article about a game that we really haven't seen anything from. Um, while you know, Deep Rock is they're still kind of being very shut in about Deep Rock development at the moment. Uh, aside from the season five feature list, but still, we got this, and it's sort of. Um, I would say you know, even if most of it isn't in bro core like, as a final product or things like that, you know, it's all work in progress stuff. It kind of doesn't matter. It was still just so cool to see this approach taken to just such a weird type of creature, basically. It, it's really just... I hope most yeah. people have seen it. I actually... It's in the thumbnail. Uh, but it's literally just the idea of a... Uh, I mean, you can simplify it to the fact that it's just not a bug being the most like interesting thing. You can really bring it down to just that. The fact that it's not an insect-like creature uh, at all. Um, and how weird and unexpected that is but also how that might be a rogue core thing right more importantly not a deep rock thing this enemy might yeah. not it, it first of all might might not be in rogue core it, i think it will be i because uh, i i yeah. think i think there's a reason they put this post out and it's because they have an idea of how they might want to go with some of the enemies in rogue core uh, so i don't think there'll be something like this in rogue core but th this might be one of the things that doesn't find its way to deep rock as well and that's because of the tone differences and and things like that yeah i think and making road calls you know the main the, there was like two main points is how i read it first of all they wanted to demonstrate how they come up with a creature right yes. like starting from the um just the, the rough ideas of like humanoid um but like not actually a human right just humanoid features um and then like they move on to like you know sketching it out right the the nice cool art and then eventually 3d modeling and then so on and so forth right like that i think that was like you know one of their main goals but also to just kind of pull the rug out of everyone like perception of rocor in that this they're trying new things right rocor is not just going to be deep rock rogue roguelike right it is going to be tonally and like literally a, a different game right and as far as i think um which obviously he didn't make in the post, but like Sniss mentioned, because he'd played it obviously in his video, that it actually plays quite differently. Like it is distinctively different, which going by just seeing this enemy, I mean, it really does paint a completely different picture, right? <laughs> of what oh, like, yeah. you would expect going into this. Like I really, we were just assuming it would be like, uh, just, oh, what was that roguelike call where you're like those animals? Um, uh, Gunfire like, Reborn. Gunfire Reborn, but Deep Rock. Like I feel like that's that's what I saw when I when you know when we saw the little bits of it that they had. But yeah, it you know, it's, like, it's, like, it's like the difference between the to me. It's, it's a different. Well, first of all, I think it's technically a rogue light. I don't actually know. I think rogue light sounds feels better to say though. So I might just say it for the sake of conversation. All of the most things are rogue -like. Yeah, for the sake of convenience, I might just say rogue like. Um, but it's a difference between it being a roguelike wearing a deep rock skin in that it's not that it's different between it being that and an actual deep rock galactic roguelike game and what that means is that yeah it's still in the roguelike genre and yeah it's still deep rock um but it's those two things coming together to make a product that is unique in every way it's unique in the context game. yeah it's unique in the context of drg it's still a drg game but it's still unique in the context of that. And it's still a unique yeah, roguelike. Yeah, yeah. It's still unique from other roguelikes as well, even if you took away the DRG parts. Like, it's DRG, yeah, yeah but very tonally different with things that you wouldn't normally see in DRG. Yeah, it's a roguelike, yeah, except they have a very distinct idea of the structure of the gameplay that is going to make it very different. Like, you know, like the five-stage structure of every run, the fact that they, are, they know they're going to do multiple runs, it's still going to adopt, like, the main DRG features of, like, actually carrying out a mining expedition of some or, kind or like, like there will be objects right? like there will be like objectives like like deep rock mission objectives in rogue core like that's kind of a weird thing yeah. for a rogue like to have and it's just like man 
yeah, show me show me more um, <laughs> I want to know more yeah and I think oh, yeah, see, the only thing we well, we've seen like a couple of things now but this being the main one that is like everything you that you think is deep rock won't inherently be the same in road core right no. like a creature like that would never in a million years be added to deep rock well right? i mean i don't like, know about that not, like normally <laughs> no not normally not, not normally something like that if they weren't then working on this new game they might add it like if that's like the main thing in road core they might add it to deep rock because well, you know like it's a themed event right but I th- yeah, I mean, I have, I have an I, I kind of feel like, um, I don't think season five and six are going to literally be. I don't think season six is going to be a sequel to season five. But they have talked about, um, because the dev, so the dev Q and A article on the wiki is being updated too. Now there's like a lot of information there now, and we're going to be that's going to be next week's video. Be doing next week. Yeah, yeah, but um, <laughs> yeah. they talked about there was a thing about how Rokor. They talked about how it takes place in its own biome which they might that might have been a bit of a miss like a little bit of misspeaking and that it's still probably gonna be multiple biomes but i think the idea that a biome was in heavy consideration for season five which really makes me believe that we're going to get one in season six and a biome is the kind of way that you would probably introduce an enemy like that to DLG anyway you know in the place that it resides but then again, obviously, that's kind of yeah. making it a biome exclusive enemy, which I'm not sure they're too infused about. I'm just saying, I think it's um, absolutely not an impossibility, but I think that's kind of the not. I don't think the point of the article was to make you think of it being in DLG, though. I think it's actually supposed to be the opposite. I think it's supposed to make you realize how different Rogue Corps will be, um, more so than, oh, how, how could this be implemented in Deep Rock? Um, and it, yeah. it, it kind of inspired me to, to sort of have that be the like the relatively the main topic of this episode, which is kind of how different the two games should be. Um, very, by the way, I think personally, yeah. um, more different than perhaps some people would like. We talk about um, how there should be a goal to have Deep Rock and Rogue Court almost be synonymous, and in that they are not that they are literally the same, but like. The idea of one being as good as the other, right? More so the idea of yeah. one getting an update is as good as the other one getting an update. It's like a, a sim like, like a symbiotic play, two the two games yeah, like exist in symbiosis can play basically. The games like equally, right? Like if yeah. one get like they can just switch games to whichever one's getting the attention paid to, and that it should be like like that that is the goal at least. It's not literally gonna be like that ultimately. Some people won't like the new like, I don't know like roguelikes maybe some people just don't like roguelikes they think it's yeah. they're overdone right then those people will continue playing deep rock and they but kind of they kind of are people... by the way i think they kind of are <laughs> yeah roguelikes kind of took over the gaming industry like everyone and their mum did a roguelike just like battle royales right um but for more um indie developers but um I don't know. It, it's. I think Deep Rock has always suited a roguelike, right? Yep. I think that there is, is a reason why this is the first kind of thing that they've done, right? And that they were tempted to just add it straight up to the game, right? That's how close and simple that was. Um, uh, I don't know. I think it's. Uh, I think it should play similarly enough, or at least have the same appeal. Is probably the, an, another way of putting it. Like anything you get from Deep Rock, be it like exploration the co-op community stuff like maybe cosmetics like everything along those lines should hopefully hold in road core as well mm. so like the same reasons you play deep rock apply to road core but the gameplay is different enough to keep it fresh right like i think that's like hopefully the goal because otherwise it, like if you only like one of them then it's going to feel pretty rough like if and this is the problem if Rokor sucks, but I think we're gonna ignore that because all oh, there's no signs that, that lead to it being like bad. We'll just assume it's gonna be great because it's ghost ship and then call it there. But like if you genuinely can't stand um Rokor, then you're kinda of gonna be getting a pretty shoddy experience from Ghost Ship from like now on. Yeah. Right. I assume you've been getting it for like the last couple of months now, really, like half a year. Well the like, idea is that um obviously it's a little bit different for us or for people who you know, don't have, you know, PCs, for example. Because, by the way, I, I think yeah. it's pretty... I think they're pretty decided on this. I don't think... Unless they have, like, a real change of heart, 
I think for early access, they're not going to... I don't think they're going to bother with console. It's becoming yeah. pretty conclusive because... And there is a very good reason for that. The only thing I don't like about that idea is the fact that, like, what's going to make it worth... What's going to make it worthwhile when it's gone 1.0 anyway? Like, why isn't it worth doing from the beginning if it would become worthwhile later on? I don't know. Either way, we have to assume we're in the if position... I just want to guess there because every time they update how big of a pain in the ass that is and early stages they're going to be updating like once a month right <laughs> like I guess they're going to be updating I guess the difference is it'll be quicker yeah, well yeah like because behind. well yeah I mean we can talk about these kind of differences as well the difference of update structure right I think it was yeah. either yesterday or the day before I brought up the idea to you just in conversation of how Rocor would handle se- if it would have seasons for example and I came to the conclusion the personal conclusion that it wouldn't but until it wouldn't from the start, but it would also have them right after, as soon as 1.0 starts. That was my idea, which I think sounds, that sounds to me correct if they're going to do seasons, basically. That's what I'm saying. I, um, what I, 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 I agree with you, but like, I hope that they, because I think like those ships are capable enough to where starting from like base foundation, they could create something new rather than new seasons right yeah like i ge- i could genuinely believe that they would have uh that they could probably figure out and add like a intrinsic seasonal system within the game itself right um where it's like not called seasons but like it's not just that deep right it's not that shallow rather that it's just like oh they're not technically seasons like i don't know i feel like they could probably figure out a, a system better from earlier on but um mm. that's just my hope at least that they they, they they don't really need to either right like no. i mean what, what did they say this the um the seasons in deep rock were for like uh just kind of you know padding out the playtime, right keeping people from playing longer between updates um which is not a concern when the updates are like one to two months apart right which is what is likely going to be a court um and the, if Rokor's updates are far apart, it's only because they're going to be, like, huge, right? Like, <laughs> if if early Deep Rock is anything mm. to go by, the speed of which they're going to be developing stuff for Rokor is going to be absolutely insane. <laughs> yeah, right? I, I was actually like, looking at it yesterday because I wasn't 100% sure how quick things were. But if you go from um, the original Early Access launch um, in February 2018, it was... It was literally it was literally weekly updates until it was literally weekly updates for about two and a half months I think like straight up um, yeah and obviously you know some of them are pretty small but they're all they're all big they were all bigger than just patches though they were all adding they were like adding Bosco right like stuff like adding that adding Bosco like, yeah things like that like and it's kind of like. You know, I feel like it might. There, there is an argument that it could be slightly slower, like well, you know, because Rogue be Corps, but it's probably going to be well. well. Yeah, I think chances are it's going to be a bit like, more finalized before early access, anyway, right? Yeah, it's not going to be as in flux. Have a better idea. Yeah, there's going to be a better. Idea. But then you've got to go to like you, you're minus a couple points for that, and then you realize there's way more people than when they started Deep Rock, mm-hmm. and they're way more experienced, right? <laughs> and it, you start realizing, holy shit, this this could get a bit absurd. Um, at the very least, I think equal to Deep Rock, you know, or at the very least, they come out a lot more closer to 1.0 than Deep Rock as well. I feel like it's probably quite realistic. Um, I think it's going to come out. Like, I think it's going to be closer to the final vision of the game. I don't. I'm not yeah, like, not inherently like, more complete, but I feel like they're probably going to know what they're doing more so with the, up, the like, upcoming updates. Like in in original Deep Rock, I think they basically had to like remodel everything, right? Like everything had to get like remade like a couple times. Uh, like so, is it, that, is, is it like, like that's the kind of thing we're it. probably not we're not expecting as much unlikely. of that from Rogue. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. unlikely because because the, the art style we assume that's going to be more locked in, right? Because we know yeah. it's um we know the art style was going to be different in some way art style not meaning i think art design actually being different is more appropriate it's still going to look like deep rock but that doesn't mean they can't still you polygons, know right exactly but think something like the hoxie's crawler like we saw in the below decks post that's an example of a different art that is an example of a different art style because of the kind of just the tone of the asset basically 
of it yeah. as a 3D asset is so different. Um, but I think we, we were originally talking about write... update structure though, and I can't I can't remember why. Oh shit! Damn it! <laughs> Go on. Well, it's just because <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, early on, I think I think we could expect like a lot. Um, or at least a lot per whenever it does come out, right? Mm -hmm. um, like, just it, it's gonna make you realize how like slow Deep Rock is to work on. I imagine, <laughs> right? Like for them, like, like you know the the technical debt and you know just trying to like figure out like what they can do within like the the game at this point, right? Um, but in Broke Core, there's like basically like they can add anything. Like we're gonna see features like um, overclocks. Uh, like the overclock system and like the end game system and like beers be added to Rocor, right? And not like literally those ones, but like just an update will casually add like a whole new chunk of the game. <laughs> like stuff that people at this point in time take for granted, right? Which is fair. Like if anyone came on like since 1.0 onwards, it that's been around since they've known it, right? That end game stuff. Um, yeah. But like for us, th th there wasn't anything that early on, right? It was literally like you get on. Your your weapons have like those five tiers of of things, and that was about it, right? <laughs> that was like yeah. Uh, and so road core is probably going to be more than that, right? Out of the gate, there's yeah. probably going to be overclocks. I imagine at the beginning of road core in whatever form they are. Yeah, um, I don't know how they like, might handle those. Upgrade, but, uh, I think games or something. Yeah, it's, it's not. It wouldn't surprise me if they do it in the same way, a, a similar way to Survivor, because um, most rogue. Yeah, pretty much every roguelike or roguelike, you do level up your weapons or, you know, your abilities or whatever. So I would assume you level up yeah. your weapons throughout, like, the run. Because um, in Survivor, you get an overclock for your weapons every six levels up to level 18. I'm not saying it's going to be exactly the same, but a similar thing would make sense. Um, you might still have to unlock... There might still be an overclock grind, though. I don't know about that. Though. I don't know. That's the thing I do wonder about them adopting, whether or not they would want to do something like that again. You know, it, it, it is it is one of the most it is overall one of the most controversial things about Deep Rock, right? It it co it's one of the most regular sources of like well, kind of controversial if discussion. To, if you know what I mean? If we want to just kind of like take, like if we just think about rogue roguelikes, right? As as generally as they are, Robo Quest, Gunfire Reborn, um, those are the most relevant ones because they're the ones where you like pick up guns, right? Yeah. Overclocks would be what a legendary weapon gets, right? Like, like as you as you would get like a if if we to assume they're going to do that because in you, in the game don't you pick you have a starter pistol and then you have like a special weapon and an ability but that's not relevant right now. Oh, right? I that's don't know like if it's a special we weapon. I, I don't. Isn't there? I don't remember being something. What I remember, yeah, you had the starting pistol, um, and a pickaxe. Uh, I don't know what All special right. weapon. Oh, I guess you have the the kit. You have a starting ability as well. Maybe. I thought um, there was a special weapon. But e either way, this works. Well, no, to, because um... there was another thing about how... Because I think you still have the four item slots but in Rogue War, but they can be anything. Which means, like, you could have, like, multiple traversal tools, for example. But they would still take well, up... Uh, a slot. You, you, you could would, have four you, weapons as well, I think. I think. Yeah, you would find them, like, in the cave, right? And I assume that they would have modifiers because that's very... Like usual for for these kind of things right mm -hmm. like they would have modifiers um either that or they always come like but even then like you would get them like really like common and you can maybe upgrade them like throughout but they would get modifiers and then eventually if you find a legendary it would have like an overclock right you get a legendary flamethrower it would have stick uh like sticky fuel on it right that kind of thing yeah i mean um, rarity could also dictate what kind of overclock though like legendary could be unstable and then it could go down like in Tears almost right yeah, where you could get maybe <laughs> that no he's <laughs> just like <laughs> i don't know i'm just trying to picture it like it, i don't know um i assume this is all stuff that they probably would have figured out by now i'd imagine um well yeah i mean i wanted to talk not, been working on deep rock um, well no they said that but... um a lot of a lot of stuff about deep a lot, a lot of stuff about road core is like pretty decided upon i think they're still at the stage where like most of it is Technic most of it is technically up in the air, but also I think there most of it also has like what it could be decided upon, like the classes, for example, which is something we can talk about a little bit. I don't know if you remember yeah. the classes thing, um, which got brought up to us in a comment that was um 
I'm not going to like call out the comment in any kind of way. Well, I am, but not the commenter. Um, it was kind of brought up to us as almost like a negative because they were, um, about how, you know, originally uh, the statement was that Rocall wouldn't be using classes necessarily, um, but there would be like these, I don't know, these kits that you would choose that would dictate your starting ability, something like that. Um, yeah, that's that's where I think I got the weapon thing from. I yeah. swear it's you pick a a special weapon and a special ability, and those are the things you pick, and then you go into the mission, and you would have, like, the pistol and the pickaxe. Like, I swear that's what it was, if I recall correctly. Because that's why it's not classes. You don't pick an ability and a weapon combined, because that is a class. I think you pick one or the other from pools, and that's what it was. Well, yeah, but it might be more was. true now, because there will be classes, as far as we know now. Um, but in some way, I recall. But the point is, there will be more than four classes right and that's the difference between the two i, I feel like it was almost like um deep rock is so defined by the four classes that it was almost like let's just go classes for rogue courts like and really make it different but they probably came to realize that wasn't inherently correct and now but now you can actually why don't you just do more than four and i don't know if that means you would have like the gunner driller scout and engineer there like maybe not Probably not, in fact, because we obviously were dealing well, with a different look, group of dwarves. As far uh, as I think I recall, we heard like the traversal tools are like at least when they mentioned this, which was a while ago now, in the caves. They're not. They're not anything you can equip mm. um, at the beginning. You would. You would find them. At least they. They think. I don't think they had ironed it out then. Um, but like. No. Like it's difficult to kind of picture. I think the the only concept we have is from that screenshot, which is likely dated, where it was like a dwarf had the ability to like slow time, right? Yeah. If we are to assume that that's still in the game, we are, and and to assume what they've done to classes, then the slow time class would also then have like a slow time weapon to go with it or something, right? Well, I'm pretty like, sure though like, that 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 screenshot is a screenshot of a drawing, like uh, of like a mock up. I don't, I don't think that was from. Yeah. I don't think that was captured I, from I the game. No, because that was like a menu. That was like nice. I think that was like a, uh, a like a graphic that they made of a menu, like a prototype menu yeah. image. It, I don't think it was yeah. from like the. I don't think they were running the game when they took that screenshot. But I think it was still intended to be potentially something in the game. Um, and it was just to give us an idea of how choosing upgrades might look, and it and it like had an indicator yeah. what like the current player's like ability was, which was time dilation or something like that. Um, yeah. But you know, it's like what was that? What is that? Is that a class? What would that class's name be? Like, it's kind of hard to imagine it actually using classes because yeah, I I don't know I I I can't see them naming the classes because that's that seems unnecessarily restrictive, right? Like like it's then like yeah, it's like you create this really cool ability like time dilation. Then what do you call the class? Like that shouldn't be a question. You shouldn't have that idea be limited by what you name a class because now you're going to be sitting there like. We can't think of a name, so what? What do we do? We can't really add it anyway, can we? Like we're, we're gonna have to come up with a weird name, like Time Lord, <laughs> like, you know, which as cool as that would be, the Time Lord dwarf. Um, I, I, you know, it's unlikely, and so it, it's like oh, clockwork. I, 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 I... <laughs> yeah, um, I'm more of a fan of yeah. You would just pick an ability that you like the look of, pick a special weapon you like the look of, and then you just kind of go in. Um, I hope they don't like tie the two together that much. Um, unless maybe it's like what would be cool is like either have like a word like in the titles in like Diablo, right? Where it's like, um, oh, okay, he's got uh, Diablo, he's got Diablo it, brain already. He's got Diablo. I, I do. It came on Xbox Game Pass yesterday, and I've not really stopped playing it. I set up until like one and then woke up at like seven, <laughs> like playing it, but uh, the uh. Like the clock has like a time so and so, right? Like, uh, like the time moniker would be on it, and then like you would pick the sniper, and you'd be your class would then be technically called a time sniper or some shit like that, right? What are you talking like, about, boy? Pick, like you you pick like the the time, and then you pick like I don't know, um, the B gun, <laughs> there with a time beekeeper, um, but time like, keeper. I don't know. I guess yes, that would actually work. Um, but um, I don't know. I just hope that it is a little bit more fluid because with roguelikes, 
you kind of got to be quite loose, right? And it, yeah. and was it was they they quoted uh, the one that we keep mentioning, the animal one, and Gunfire Reborn. Gunfire and Reborn, Potato, and... wasn't it? Yes. No, 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 no. No, Potato, oh? I think that's for, for Survivor. Um, right, maybe. Oh, shit. Was it, not dead, was it not Dead Cells? It might have been Dead Cells, um, which is interesting, because Dead Cells doesn't have anything like that. Um, it, dead Cells, um, the character is just a character, but you can like get a thing at the beginning where you would pick from like one of four tubes with like a loadout on it. Um, tubes. But then, yeah, Gunfire Reborn, you pick a character with certain abilities. So it doesn't paint a good picture. But I don't know. I, I brought up Brotato because it's really good. It's got like pff, fucking 30 to 40 classes, maybe. Probably more 30, um, which are very simple. They just give you stats in a certain area of the game. But I, I don't know. I feel like the more open it is the better i think the game would be a lot better for it um especially considering you know deep rock i wouldn't say it suffers from but it specifically resides in the four classes you make do with those four classes uh, i would be a huge fan if they kind of like in rogue core are like yeah you know just just pick abilities you know see what see what works see what you like yeah it's kind of reminds me of when you're talking a bit about how Rogue Core might handle customization because we're very strongly assuming that that will be a major feature of the game, right? And I think that's fair because you you tried to pin down like the three main, I don't know, pillars of Deep Rock's what what makes Deep Rock basically as a game, um, which is like uh, gameplay progression and customization, right? Which I think is correct, and yeah. I assume that they intend to have the same like three core principles. Um, they've been very specific, actually. I was just looking at, like, the main, I guess, first post about Road Call. I think it's the, the, just the main original Road Call, like, internal roadmap, basically. And it talked about how um, they are specifically calling it a Rogue Light. So we actually should be saying Rogue Light, um, because right. that, 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 those are the ones that have, um, like, you know, permanent progression, power progression specifically. Like they said, you will, yeah. you will get, like, stronger. You will, be, yeah, basically, between. Um... But we are very strongly seeing that customization will be a major feature of the game, um, even on early access launch. But that, I think, what we talked about was how, especially with the classes thing, that it wouldn't be you. You know, you just because in Deep Rock, obviously, it's just the four classes; they have their own looks. I think Rogue Core is going to be more like every. The customization is just whatever, in the sense of it's not locked to. In, it's not locked for like I'm... classes or anything like that. But you can make any any of the dwarves look however you want. I guess you, I assume you'd have like multiple dwarves that you can customize. Or like loadout, right? Like you would have like ten loadouts where you would pick the the ability and weapon you like, and then you make the dwarf like you'd pick from like a bunch You're of dwarf loadouts. Knee down, boy. Like there would be Get your knee out the frame. I'm comfy. Uh, there would be there would be like i don't know like lean dwarf like scout right mm. or like chubby dwarf like like driller and then there would be like lean female dwarf and then lean chubby uh, female dwarf like you know that what? kind of thing um oh, because yeah. there's no excuse for them not to add women dwarves into road core like they, that that would be a bit of a, a a genuine debacle if they don't add it um, cuz their excuse was that it was it was too late to add right and it is not too late to add now so you know Come on. But yeah, if you like just have like a preset set of dwarves and then like, you know, you would have the armors that kind of work for all of them and then those would be customizable. Like, I don't know. I think. Yeah, they, more... they, well, they have an excuse to actually they... free themselves a bit more with customization because I really yeah. don't think they should lock it between. The only way they should lock it between certain categories of the, like the character models is with your idea of having. Like a light, medium, and heavy build that would dictate what like kit you can put on the dwarf. But aside from that, yeah, I think for the, for the most part it should be shared. Um, especially if it's gonna be more than four classes. I don't know why. When they say more than four classes, my brain jumps to twelve for some reason because they're assuming they're gonna be much more simplistic. So I'm thinking like something like twelve starting kits sounds like a good number, and we don't even need to assume that, but we can go off of that. It's like just a basic estimate, and it's like. 
you obviously would not want to split customization to be locked within 12 different classes. So yeah, I absolutely think the customization is going to be more freeform. And it would be like it would be like three times as shallow, right? At that point, like um, you know, if you got four dwarves, and you oh yeah, can, you if can it put like locked yeah. to each of those dwarves. But like twelve, and you're like, you're like, uh oh, what are you gonna do then, right? You can't like give them really individual stuff because, you know, there's so like many of them, it'll be a huge pain in the ass. So, I don't know. I hope they're thinking about all that stuff. Um, I also hope, uh, and this is just something that popped into my head, and I want to just get it out there. I hope that they start by splitting up the headgear stuff more, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, having goggles. And eye stuff be their own thing. Face well, paint. Well, actually, hold on, hold thing. on, because this is something that I thought about originally, I think. And I really hope they go this direction personally now I think about it. Of Brokaw going a bit more of the character creation route. A bit more like face stuff, right? Like you would get be able to... Well, more so that... like make their cheekbones or, like, fall well, out or anything. Well, I just like... mentioned that you would have like multiple dwarves, but I actually hope they go in the direction of you have one dwarf more so um or maybe you could make more than one but i do like the idea of being able to make like actually make a dwarf and that might i'm saying genuinely that could include like face as well customization of like how they actually look because i think they are going to go somewhere with that i don't think they're all going to just be like just like straight up the same deep rock dwarf face which makes me think they might have a choice of like faces or even be able to customize that kind of thing like I, I, they could go pretty far with it if you just make your dwarf, and then you can just have it be whatever you can have them use whatever kit you want, which means you could have like you can customize their body type and things like that. Maybe that's a bit far, yeah, but definitely I, I... things like tattoos and whatnot. Absolutely, like the reclaimers definitely sound like a bunch. Especially the idea, which I really hope they get like in because Mikkel wants to do it, of them having a gym on the on the ramrod on their ship instead of a bar. <laughs> I don't know if instead of, but. Getting the gym really in there. Kind of ridiculous. It would be really kind of ridiculous, but like if you regularly interact with the gym or like the freezer in the hub, your dwarf slowly gets like more ripped or more fat. <laughs> like I would really <laughs> love that. Like, I don't know about that, but definitely kid, like like what like build your, your dwarf is. You basically actually just build your dwarf into that. And yeah, that'd be pretty fucking They sick. wouldn't yeah. they won't do that because that's a, a very silly system to put F, put time into of actually for a game well, for not, a game I'm not talking well, like it, it, Tyler, if it was a if it was like, a game you know, about bodybuilding, gradual. then I would agree with you, but it's not. <laughs> but it's not. Yeah. But I don't know. I I I, I think it would be a, a funny cool thing to add. And I don't think it'd be that much because it would be like just Every like five times you go to the gym in the row, your dude like changes to be like a slightly more buff model, and it's like three models basically that get progressively more buff, um, and then like the other way around to fat, um, and then maybe a both. I don't know. I think I think it would be cool and fun though. Like if the way that you um, customize your dwarf is by just choosing a different lifestyle in the hub, I think it'll make the hub even more interactive. Um, yeah, they do have a chance. I mean, they talked about well, yeah, but we can talk about the hub actually because there are some things that we do know. And how different, like, we think they should be. And I think, I think they should be real. What are you doing? What are you doing? Just continue talking. You need to be my camera. Yeah, but you need to be able to talk properly. I can. I'm, I'm at my mic. I oh, don't great. need to be like there. <laughs> what if you move so? Anyway, so the hub areas, I think the reason why they should be so different, because we already know a little bit about the, the Rokor hub, um, about the Ramrod, but. The thing is, the space rig, in my opinion, is, like, built by DRG to try and, you know, cater to the dwarves. And it's not quite there. But the ramrod is the reclaimer's ship, yeah. right? So it should definitely be much more dwarven, much more personal to dwarves. We already know a little bit about how, I think they are going like the direction of it being a little bit, like, well, much, uh, in some ways, much more claustrophobic. In some ways. Like a, like a submarine, almost. In terms of like there's probably not going to be a yeah. big like a massive hangar in fact i assume that they're probably going to go down in like little pods or something like we don't even know if they would if you go down in, like the main drop like drop pod you probably don't i imagine you get shot out of something different. i imagine they, they um, might need a more like industrial like thing they're going in deeper than a drop pod might be able to support like there'd be that kind of thing yeah but um, i really like the idea of it being a little bit more 
like just complicated as in it's like it, it the submarine thing would make sense but not for every room like you would still have it open out a bit for like the bar and um and like the, the the gym and things like that but for the most part you might be like running down like quite like dark like quite tight corridors that make up the hub and i don't hate that at all i definitely want it to feel different like the main mission area would be a very like, like the main mission yeah. area would be a very darkly lit like submarine like you know hub like the main it, area you see in like, like, movies you know that, like, those weird tunnels in like the, the above area of the, the rig where it's all this like narrow tunnels with like leaky oil and like stuff like that just like weird stuff like it'll be that but probably with you know more detail um yeah but yeah no i don't know i i'm really looking forward to the different different like aesthetic of Rogue Corps. i think that's well, probably the main thing yeah I'm i mean everything's to. gonna be different in some way and that includes the music by the way um i think they are not they're not they're re they're definitely not dismissing reusing deep rock soundtrack at all but i think the plan is it's a new game you know it it's going to have a new soundtrack right i think it, yeah more metal would, like suit different music I, I think that well, is I think correct, it, it, though. I, I don't mean that's like a joke, so, oh, I like metal, because I do, but I think that makes sense. It, I think it's going to be a bit, you know, darker and a bit more dwarven, so I think, not necessarily metal, but I, I think, think more like drugs, real, yeah. more, more like real drugs, drums yeah. and the things like that, you know? Like, yeah. Like metal well, like infused really, cyberpunk. Like, sounds. Yeah, because like, like, well, um, Deep Rock is kind of like synthwave slash cyberpunk. And I guess I want yeah. Ro I want Rogue Call to be, um, I guess, like I don't know, metal like, slash cyberpunk or dark metal slash cyberpunk, that kind of thing. Like, I don't really. Okay. I, I, from what we can kind of tell, that it's going to be really dark. It's going to be at least slightly more serious, right? And that the creatures are going to be these abominations of hell themselves, right? Like with those things in mind, I can't really see like a wow, 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 like that kind of thing. I don't know. Mm. I, I don't think it would like suit any moment in it. But like a really like kind of like eerie like. I don't know, like more than like battle music, like like some hard harder stuff. I think feels a little more apt. Um, although you know, as of current, we don't even know if there's going to be like extraction music, right? Well, we don't uh, know like, if it's going to be an extraction like... phase at all. Um, you would assume exactly. not in yeah. each stage, but there might be like that might be a part at like the very end of like, it might be like the a run. Finale. Yeah, it could be the um, final stage yeah. of the run. It could be like as in it, it, if they do it, it should definitely be part of the run it shouldn't feel like you've got to the end and now you have to do this thing out of nowhere it should basically be the final stage is like a time like a time yeah, I, I just want to run put this in here in case anyone at ghost ship is listening please for the love of god make when you finish a game either victory or loss can you make that like audible <laughs> like whether or not you won or lost because it always sounds like you lose a mission <laughs> right like the soundtrack of, of coming out of a mission in deep rock always sounds like a failure song like it is so downtrodden and like not really anything um not that i think it's going to do like a victory celebration in robocore especially but like i don't know that's the kind of thing that i think they can get ahead and do you know, and initially, instead of like getting never getting round to it, like in in Deep Rock, um, I don't know how to really explain this properly, but I would really my favorite hub. Well, now that I realize it, in any game is actually from Doom Eternal, um, which the main hub that you sort of just reside in between levels, which is the the the, the Fortress of Doom, unsurprisingly. Uh, well, it's a little bit. I mean, it is a space station, but it's it it looks more like an actual like building. Just floating in space where the Doom guy just hangs out. I really want them to take inspiration from that because it's so fucking cool. It's probably my favorite hub Wait. I've ever experienced. Space station? Is, he is Doom a fantasy? Like in like sci fi, rather. That makes more sense. Doom Eternal specifically I mean, I is very, very sci fi fantasy. It's very much is so hell both. a different planet. Is it actually um, hell? No, hell is actually a different time. There's a different realm. Um,. And there's like right. other realms of hell that don't look like hell, and they're more like very like fantasy world type places with like actual like dragons and like mixed like high tech like night civilizations. So Doom like is so much. Combo. Doom is so probably so weird to people who don't realize what like is actually in Doom lore wise. You know, people like, people don't I know. Guess, it's crazy. Doom, it's ridiculous. Like, Doom guy had like a sci fi suit, but then it's just like he's fighting demons the whole time. So it's like I don't know. But yeah, that's crazy. I did, didn't expect a spaceship in the Doom franchise. 
Um, but I mean, hey, that's that's two games that uh, mix fantasy with sci-fi, and it seems to go pretty damn well, right? <laughs> like Doom and Deep Rock, um, Doom Rock, as it were. Doom Rock. Well, but, yeah, I mean, um, like, I mean, if you want to go a bit more of a Doom I would route argue with the, that, with the that music. should be the sound they were going for. Yeah, that, that Road Call should have Doom Rock as its as its like soundtrack, whatever. Well, that it's is. industrial metal, right. is what it is. No, because it should still. I personally think the cyberpunk thing is what you you're meant to retain, right? I think the synthwave part is what gives like Deep Rock the more um atmospheric kind of um the mi- the mixed tone. Isn't where it, like, you uh, know the way the way Deep Rock play, soundtrack is right? constructed is that it's very easy to push Deep Rock into being kind of dark, but also kind of like mesmerizing at the same time. Road Call, like I, I said, like Deep Rock is synthwave slash cyberpunk. I've realized it now. That's Deep Rock. Road Call should be industrial metal slash cyberpunk. That's that's what I want, personally. Or is there, um, like, dark synthwave or some shit like that? Like, there yeah. is, like... Yeah, something more along those lines, I think. Just where it's kind of, like... I don't know. I, I think it would be cool if, like, Brocore is, like, kind of, like... There's not really any light. Like, there's no hope. <laughs> right? I don't think it's going to be that <laughs> like, dark. It's... No, because I, I think you, you, you run the risk of it not being cool, then, if it's so dim. I don't think it's going to be the case. I think the dwarves are still going to be fairly dwarven. Oh. Um, I just think there's going to be less. Um, I think, but they are going to be more serious at the same time. They're still going to feel like dwarves, but I think that's something. I think the voice act they might have a different actor like, though, even for the dwarves. Maybe I think the they will. Like dwarf, the dwarf like in a in a battleground war type, rather than when like all said and done and they're getting absolutely piss wasted, right? That kind of thing. Yeah, it's like it's, more, it's it's like um... the difference between or Tyler. This is what I mean about them still being the same kind of. Same dwarves, relatively speaking. It's like in the Hobbit. Yeah. It's like the the difference is the DRG, the dwarves. It's like they're always at bag end, right? They're always at bag end. Um, Bilbo's house. Or they're naked and frolicking in the fountain. Yeah, they're right, always in, the in that mode, like a hundred percent of the time. And in Rokor, they're in like um, you know the uh, the Iron Hills mode, like Dane and his army mode, basically a hundred percent of the time. Um, where they're still, they're still, still they, they still find fun. it fun. Exactly. Yeah, they still find yeah. it fun. Yeah. But they're there to actually do a job. They're much more, they're just more disciplined, but they still have a dwarven personality baked into them. But they are more disciplined and serious, which I, I, that's it, something I really want to see. I really do want them to feel like, feel like the dwarves, but just be more disciplined. I think that's a really cool idea. You know, it's the difference yeah. between, it's literally like the difference between, I don't know, Dwarlin and Bofa, basically. <laughs> if you remember who either of those two I, are. I want them to be more like Dwarlin, basically. Dwarlin still has I, a drink and he can still have a laugh, but he's a fucking unit at the same time. Um, I'm not sure of like a lot of things, like well, because we obviously they don't, don't know. But like yeah. if the hurricane gets added to Rogue Core, oh my god, <laughs> hello. Um and um the uh, like reload animations are also a part of road core i want like the main telltale sign between the two games to be you know in deep rock the reload animation of the hurricane he goes like like you know the little like you know he's playing around with the rocket and i want in in road core the guy to pick up the rocket and then say like no and then put it back in the thing like i want that to be the main difference that like he thought about it the dwarf he, he wanted to like you know like play Don't with the show rocket and like he's been around hole. I was trying to cover it up. He's a pervert. Um, but I, like, I, I want him to, like, you know, think about it, but ultimately not do it. Um, which, you know, is a... That's the kind of thing I want, I, I think, is that, like, when, when like, when's all say and done so-and-so, the the Rokor dwarves actually, like, take it seriously. Um, yeah, that kind of gets into... Because in, in the cave, it, like, treats as such. Yeah, that's the kind of thing... That actually makes me think of an interesting aspect of this, which is it should be treated as synonymous in some ways and in some ways not. And that's actually the ways in which it would be synonymous in that it's basically just a mirror of Deep Rock, right? Because I don't think they need to add more of those animations for Deep Rock, right? Um, They could, and it would actually be pretty cool, but I would rather they just have them all as they are. And then Rokor, there's only one animation for every gun as well, but it's like just a complete opposite kind of thing. Um, well, and yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, but Hurricane One, he doesn't play with it, and like that kind of difference. Like, um, I don't know. Like, yeah, the same. You could do the same with like the um, the uh, oh, what's the bloody gun? The one that's the mining laser, um, <laughs> big one, wide, wide. Uh, oh, the breach cutter. 
That's the one. Like where he, you know, he, he touches the laser and gets shocked, right? Like the the road cord war. I wanted to put his hand in it. He puts his hand in it and then he brings it out and he's got like a fist or... of lightning. He's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he either is like smart enough not to touch it or firms it when he does, and he just doesn't care. I think he should um, firm it. I would prefer like, that. That, that, that to like me he feels just, more. He like touches it and it's like, and he's just like, <clears throat> you just hear him like grunt and then like pull his finger away, like without even like flinching really. That's like, that more what too. a serious like, wolf would do. Kind of things. I, so I think a serious wolf would I still do like... kind of stupid things, but he's just like, he's just a uh, he's just got it though. He can just do things and yeah. get away with it, like um. Like juggling the hurricane rockets. <laughs> I think yeah, because that's the thing, right? Like it's like like with the with the playful thing. I don't really want them to be like playful, but but like being stupid is part of being a dwarf, right? A dwarf is stupid. He will touch the 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 glowing thing, right? <laughs> that's just what they're gonna do. Yeah. But um, but yeah, a, a, a road core dwarf would firm it. Um, and that that's kind of like the hope, like kind of you know the difference between the dwarves, um. And yeah, I don't know. It's um, we got a lot of hopes for Road Core. Got a lot of hopes and a lot and... of hope. Separate. Yeah. Um, well, and hope. Well, actually, it, hope know... almost implies that you need hope. I don't feel like we need hope. I am pretty. You know, we're quite confident actually. Um, I feel like hope yeah. implies a lack of confidence, which wouldn't be true. Um, yeah, we don't feel the need to be on our hands and knees and go, please, right? Like, like we were with season four, like, please be good season four, and then God ignored us. Well, yeah, right? I mean, it's the same season like, five. Um, we're pretty confident season five is going to be good. Um, yeah, we're not on our hands and knees. It, it yeah. seems to be very well in order. Especially um, with the idea like, of it possibly having more things in it, which is not a surprise, but there is something that I looked we, at. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's... um. It's kind of weird. More next week, right? but... Yeah, yeah, we will, we will. Oh. Well, we well no, because we're not meant to spend like loads of time on every oh. individual point. This is actually an opportunity to do this. It's kind of a weird way of injecting it though into the podcast. But there was something in the dev Q and A article that I really liked, which was someone asked about a um the possibility of new anomalies, and you can actually. I, I it took me a, far too long to find this out. That if you click on the link to like the original stream, it, it takes you to exactly where that was talked about someone asked about new anomalies in season five and it was Aaron talking at the time, which is um kind of good. Aaron is he's meant to be a spokesman. But he literally he just read it out and just said likely. And in a very like good tone, by the way. And there's an important aspect here of how you read a response to something like that. As in how you interpret a response to that. And I think we both on the same page of like that's the kind of that's the way you want them to respond it, it, that's the kind of closest thing yeah, you get to just a yes because the lack of elaboration is really important in making it I'm not a quite good sure if response like, you know the exact question because like sometimes when people ask like is this thing going to be added ever they'll say like yeah, probably or like you know likely like that's not, like a feature they like but this person specifically asked is there going to be any more anomalies in season five and they said likely. Like, that's like, they know what's in season five at this point in time, right? Well, yeah, because that was, that was um, adding more things. Well, yeah, um, I mean, I want to point out like, that was before the feature list was uh, posted, but it was like late February. It was still after like the, the maintenance update and things like that. So, yeah. and just because it was left out of the feature list does not mean it's, it, it, that might just mean it wasn't just confirmed yet, but it's still like something they might be working on. And, Obviously, I don't want to treat that as actually 100% confirmed. I think that would be kind of foolish. But just the mere idea that Season 5... Obviously, there's going to be more stuff, right? There will be more stuff. Miscellaneous changes, things like that. But the idea of it having actual... Any other actual features beyond what's on the list is just really exciting. And it's been so long since we've got an anomaly. I, I just think Snap... Uh, wh whatever it is, if, if it's like just its own thing, if there's like more than one because they are just adding some miscellaneous ones... Or if it's a seasonal thing, I don't care. Whatever it is, just putting that in season five would just—it <laughs> doesn't even need it. But I mean, it would be so cool. But yeah. It doesn't even need it. I mean, at this point, season five is really geared up to be the best season. Yeah. Like, like, like everything it has in it is like good, bare minimum. Like even the thing that we are not a huge fan of, and like, why are you putting your effort into that? It's not a bad idea. Right, it's not going to make the game worse. 
it's just like why are you putting your effort into it um but then everything else it seems to be like yeah please do put your effort in that that's going to be golden and yeah like we're i don't know we're in for a really fucking good show um as long as they don't really fuck it up somehow which is just it doesn't seem likely it, it feels not worth saying i feel like i have to say it just in case to cover our asses if season five ends up being the worst season but i genuinely <laughs> don't see how that's possible i can't like, I, I can't even can't entertain imagine that it. i i mean here's an interesting idea though i feel like something a question that we need to like ask ourselves i think well season four obviously gonna be better than season three as well but I wonder if we actually have a stance on this at this point. On out of season one and two, which one is actually better? Right? Because that's a really difficult conversation to have because season one seems so like, you know, impactful and so uh fruitful. But then you start to think more and more about it. And, you know, there's so much in it, but a lot of it was also pretty controversial. And it's kind of actually hard to tell. Like in some ways, like think season two could be considered better. Um overall. Well, and it's the issue is is that you can't really give it to season two because if it wasn't for season one, yeah. season two wouldn't have been anything. Like, uh, and it's like kind of like it's like that's a really shitty argument, but it is like I don't know, like you know, season one added all the primaries, which I like. Even though I think they nailed the secondaries more than the primaries yeah. generally, that's right? At least well. initially. Yeah. Um, the primaries, I think, are still more significant than secondaries, right? I still think that is still a thing. I mean, I honestly, the, the line is pretty blurred nowadays, though. Like, it is. I, I don't know. It, 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 like after after the secondaries came out, that line got blurred. Before well, it's then, a, secondaries, it's, it's a, I think, were pretty. It's a class blurred. by class basis, um, though. Really, is what it is. Um, I get. Where, but like, for example, engineer. I don't, I don't know if more important is correct, but engineer, it's like every bit is is, is important as the other. Um, if you want to see it in weapons alone, his um, importance is split across all four of his weapons, right? Primary, secondary, the sentries, and his grenades. They're pretty much all on equal standing. And then Scout, I think, is interchangeable as well, you know? There's a different direction. There's obviously a different approach for his primaries and secondaries, but they're at the same level of importance in the build, I think. Scout's weapons are like... Secondary is more of a secondary. Like, he would pull it out after his primary. The primary was the main thing. Well, that's Gunner, um, right? But, and then... Yeah, Gunner, well, especially Gunner. But then um, Driller, for example, Driller's like, like, you know, a combo kind of guy. So the second piece are really important. Yeah, but back then he wasn't. But back then he fucking wasn't, it's Harry. True. Yeah. <laughs> like, until the wave cooker come along, like, it was EPC had temperature shock with the cryo. That, that was literally it. Um, and, like, the the the, the Sabata had, does, does a little bit more damage against fire enemies. Like, that was the extent of it. It wasn't until the wave cooker came along. But we also, you know, fucking sludge pump. Like, it is actually crazy how phenomenal they nailed those the, the new set of weapons, right, in Season 1 and Season yeah. 2. Which is why I don't even think it's fair to compete, compare them. I think just take the rival era as a package and you're eating good, right? Like, yeah. that, those, yeah. that, that, that pair, the rivals are a complete package. They, they really kind of filled themselves out, especially with the addition of the Nemesis, right? Like, I mean, their events, kind of ass, admittedly. Their game mode should never have been added to uh, the assignments. But ultimately, with the weapons and the rivals on their own, in-game, are pretty solid. Yeah. Um, well, that's the difference between Season 1 and 5, though, isn't it? Like, I think there is going to be a bit of a parallel, especially going from season five to six as well, where, you know, uh, the assumption, I think the very fair assumption is being made of, like, season six will introduce uh, primary new, <laughs> primaries for the secondaries. No, new overclocks for the secondary weapons. Um, but it will yeah. still not be a sequel to season five, like season two or so season one. Um, so they're going to parallel each other in ways that are actually, is actually better, I think. But then season one, you know, the mission type. There's a big difference there. We kind of already know, kind of know, both of those things are in quotes, that the season five mission type will be better, in quotes, than industrial sabotage, right? Let's um, just say they learned their lessons yes. from industrial sabotage, right? Like, they they know what kind of game modes it is they should be adding. Um, and the, they, I think they learned, that, you know, they got carried away 
And then they realized they can't really have it be outside of assignments because then no one does them. But the mission was too much for assignments, but they still haven't really done anything about that. Well, I'm saying um, it's already like, got that um, edge, though, over season one, right? We kind of know it's going to be, be it's going to be better for the game than Industrial Sabotage was. And yeah, like, yeah, overclocks don't match weapons overall, but they're still a very well chosen equipment edition. Um, so season one, no, season five, I think is going to match season one in a lot of ways and even if it's not as much just on a technical level no no part of it is exactly as big as the part that is it's paralleling in season one it might still be better though like yeah the, the mission type isn't going to be as big as industrial sabotage probably but it's probably gonna be better and um the overclocks will I, I might, think... as long as the overclocks have a hundred percent hit rate right of that hundred like all 12 of them are good that is overall more like of a perfect addition, even than the primaries, which were a little bit edgy like, on launch. Um, I, at this point in time, I think I do prefer more overclocks because I think well, um, yeah, at the moment we yeah. like before season three, uh, before season one, season one rather. Um, I the guns, I don't know, they they weren't all there still, but I genuinely think that. Um, that after you know the gen 3 weapons there's a basically a gun for everyone i think right like they they have really mm. filled out a solid amount of the game um with weapons like basically everyone probably has something for them um it's i still think they could do a gen 4 and i think i would be sitting here like saying that obviously wasn't quite I true think... because they had a gen 4 and yeah, they're I mean, all so good but, i do like, want to like have a not, it... not necessarily have a discussion about it but i do like to ponder the idea of how much so we think that will happen before the end of Deep Rock. Because um, I think I'm on the side of it probably will happen before the end. Um, but w would that be the end? When you know, Is that the final last hurrah? I, I don't know. Probably not. But you know, think about it. There, I, how many new weapons are going to be in Rokor, for example, um, as well? Like, yeah. I mean, Survivor's got quite a few. Although well, like... all, all the new Survivor weapons are kind of weird, though. They're all like all the new ones in Survivor are like drones and like different turrets and things like that. So it's not quite the same, but Rokor will have like loads of new weapons. And I think um, Rokor will have, probably not gonna that it will have an effect on the, the likelihood of um, Gen 4 and it just will. And it will, it will have an effect on I what's in say... Gen 4 as well. <laughs> I would, yeah. But I would say it would arguably have a bit of a negative effect because I think we're getting we're getting all the you know primary season five, secondary season six of like overclocks, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um I think with they're gonna you know season seven they're probably gonna take a break from like that kind of stuff. Yeah, and hopefully it's season like, seven probably... focuses on perks <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. Ideally I mean ideally before, but you know, that that's well, the point. They talked but, about like, how it might take more than one update, until, like, you know. Um Yeah. Um, we're not looking at it until like season eight and season nine, right? A new, new, yeah. new prime, like new weapons, um, and maybe even you know nine to ten if they somehow push it off for a little bit longer. But like, I think you know they just made tons of guns for Rokor, right? Mm -hmm. They have like you know how they like kind of like we just made those guns like two years after they made those guns, right? Like now they've just made more guns yeah but here's the thing about guns there, like... in road court i mean we don't exactly know how they're handling it but the assumption i think can be fairly be made that in a roguelite the weapons the weapons don't have you don't custom, you don't though. custom yeah you don't customize weapons in a roguelite right what what they have on them is going to be dictated by like rarity and like luck and that kind of thing and possibly overclocks that you get throughout the run but what I'm saying is, there's a possibility a lot of the ideas they have for Rokor, it might be the case that they, they, they are struck by the ideas that they have, and they realise they want those ideas to get the DRG weapon treatment, if you know what I mean. The amount of depth that an individual weapon in DRG has, they might want some of the Rokor ones to have that, yeah. and that's why you would bring them over and start working on Gen 4, because... Maybe. You know. But I, I think... I think a cool down is probably yeah. I imagine I mean, they'd, they'd want exactly. Know, I actually I know what or... you mean. I know what you mean. I didn't actually think about it being you know they're making new weapons for Rokor, which means you know we've seen the effect that them having new make them making new weapons has on them in terms of making more. Yeah. It puts a delay on it, like a big delay. Like, I, I, yeah. Fuck me, but that was a lot of work. Think, yeah. <laughs> 
it will be less per weapon, but they're going to be making a lot more weapons, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like each of the weapons in Deep Rock is like you know six, seven overclocks, and like all the mods, and they've got to balance it all, and that's a lot, I imagine. And the Rogue ones are not going to have as much of all that, but they're probably going to be making like four weapons per weapon compared to Deep Rock, right? So yeah, it's probably I mean, going to be. We don't really out. know the number, yeah. I suppose. That is actually an interesting concept. I, I assume it's going to be along the lines of. Well, there's twenty, yeah, there's twenty four weapons in Deep Rock, um, overall. But I guess something I, I, like they're not gonna, all of the weapons they're ever going to add at the beginning, right? Out the gate, they're probably going to have like probably half, maybe, of what they would have like at the end, right? I Possibly. imagine they're going to be adding a fair few weapons over time. Um, well, because I mean, live service roguelikes aren't that prevalent, right? You no. can't really point to 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 that many of them. Um, no, which like... ones are? Because is Raper Quest even a live service technically? Yeah, it is. It is. I don't really, I, I don't it's really know what makes the game live service. I'm kind of realizing it this. has updates over time. Like you know, compare it to like Hades, right? That was just it came out. They patched some bugs and then they left, right? <laughs> like, like that's kind of like what they did there. And it's like that's probably more often. I, I, I'm not. I, I'm not sure about like Brotato. I mean, like that's I'm, I I haven't gotten an update for that since I've downloaded and played it. Like I don't know. It's odd. I mean, like the more, things are more likely to get DLC, right? Um, than inherently uh, just be live service, which it is, and probably will get both. But which actually, that's that's an argument as to why they're definitely going to have cosmetics because they've got to, you know, get DLC somewhere, right? Yeah, and I don't, <laughs> like, I don't think they're going to change their stance on DLC either. I think it will be only be cosmetic once again. So yeah, obviously, because customization is going to have to be a heavy focus because I don't think they're going to change that. Certainly, I think that's pretty locked yeah. in. And oh god, uh, DLC, it begs the question if DLC is do not gameplay. Oh, frameworks. Because... Um. Uh. No. Imagine. <laughs> it, no. They're not. Yeah, they're not. It, they're not. It, they're not. It, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> like 30 to 40 weapons like realistically around there <laughs> like, i can see them adopting like, frameworks sure to make unique looking weapons potentially but not like as like a cosmetic set in that sense because i don't think you're going to be customizing weapons and i think that's why it's going to be so that you know obviously oh. a roguelite is a bit more of a looter type game so you need lots of things to pick up and like switch between but even beyond that you know they're so they're unshackled from having to make a framework for every fucking weapon, so they can make more weapons. You... Yeah, yeah, frameworks definitely not, but I think paint jobs is doable um, because you know you would have like a weapons gallery, right? Which you could then go on there and then you know pick a paint job and then put it on the weapon, and then if you find it in game, it would have that paint job on it, right? Like it's not impossible, and it is preferable. People, you know, yeah, gun customization is almost as integral as the usual type of customization. Yeah. We'll think about, right? um, like, we'll think about Robo Quest. Like, there's like, there's almost like, cause there's almost like aesthetic sets in Robo Quest that you can like distinguish the weapons between, right? Like the styles of the looks of the weapons, yeah. like the futuristic ones, like the, like the, you know the strapped together like bolted together ones like the very standard military ones like the idea of frameworks yeah. is almost built into RoboQuest's like gun design and you could do the same thing with Rocor. the fact that you can have so many weapons but not have to make frameworks for them means you can have the weapons look really distinct just on their own and that's kind of where it comes yeah, from because like... they just look cool enough anyway you know like a gun yeah, like some of them bees. can be like <laughs> fashioned by the dwarves down in the caves right mm-hmm. those kind of weapons like uh, yeah like maybe a, a, the bee gun is literally like them with they grabbed like part of a bloody hive and shoved it in like a a, a jar <laughs> like exactly and, like, that's like that's the gun is um so i don't know it's um really that maybe that's more like a grenade but like just a high honeycomb in a jar um but, <laughs> yeah yeah i don't know. i i think there is so much potential for like everything in Rocor is actually absurd. <laughs> like, like um, I don't even really care about the gameplay because I just I feel like that's so solid. But I just because don't want just so. Them... It's just it's just gonna have it. You know, it's not something you need to think about too yeah. much because the gameplay yeah, is almost just there to just things. support. The gameplay is just there to support the game systems. Basically, it's just there to support yeah. the satisfaction of going through the, the run and getting upgrades and building 
and then also customizing when you get back and all that kind of thing. It's just built to support the um the conceit of the concept of the game, which is just being well in this case you're not what well, I guess that is the difference one of the biggest differences between Rogue Core and Deep Rock, isn't it? Is how how much so are we gonna be there for are the, are the reclaimers specifically combat oriented? Because as far as we know, we're still gonna be doing like mining and shit, which I think is very important. By the way, that deep Pro- that road core still has like mission deep rock mission style objectives in it. But I do wonder how yeah. much more action no, oriented it's gonna be. There are a lot more. It's a lot more combat and a lot more action. I assume every room you're gonna be going into is gonna be like it's gonna be like a pool of enemies, right? Like I, I once again going off of. Uh, uh, on fiery board because i do think that's going to be the thing it's going to be closest to just instinctually purely at this point um but yeah you just like go through the map i think it's it's procedurally generated in it's going to be in row core right it's not yep. in uh me but it's going to be in row core um but yeah like you just going to go through these rooms and there's going to be like a pool of enemies there which you're just going to have to like wipe out right i imagine and then there'll be like you know i think there was the one thing we saw there's like a refinery Something like that, right? I don't know, but like, there was like a... sound. Yeah, there was that, but um, I think some of the original of like there. prototype screenshots they had like things actually on like minecart tracks and stuff, which I really hope yeah, makes it through. So... Um, because that could actually be yeah, used. it'd be like escort, like fill up the the minecart and escort it to the way out of the cave or whatever, right? It'll be like a hole in the wall, like some bollocks. Well, yeah, you were sort of getting um... into like now, like the similarities or the things that should be similar because already I can tell that they are adopting the right things from Deep Rock to make Rokor a unique rogue light. Have they you you know like the mining the terrain and... is gonna be Yeah you, yes as mi- absolutely mi- 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 yeah. Right. That's kind of the whole point. And you still have mm. like the traversal tools and support tools and like it's the kind of things that most rogue lights don't really have because they're just completely just shooters they're just shooters or just fighting games yeah you it's just not fight. often the terrain is malleable in, ro- in roguelikes as in i i think they carry it over because they have yeah. to because that is I what can't... will make it a deep rock roguelike you know that's yeah. one of the things that will do that um so that's just super important i feel like yeah. we could have talked more it about is, the creature itself you know i mean it's, this is kind of the point because we didn't need to we've already talked about it on the stream it's more about but, what it implies right yeah I think it really is is the more yeah. important part like it, it's like yeah it's a really cool creature good boy go ship right <laughs> like yeah um, yeah that's true but it's more that like they've never done anything close to this really we've seen right that they they're pretty you know insectoid generally or android right insectoid or android it's going to have oid at the end which technically this is a humanoid so it is still an oid at the end tyler i think but, literally um... every creature had that <laughs> but like well no because when you think about the stuff that's been added to deep rock over time it's all been constructed around not really breaking that right we've got robots sure robots are pretty extreme but they're from you know they don't have faces or real personalities and they come from elsewhere as well um Rockpox is a parasite, yeah. it's extremely faceless, and it just infects, you know, the creatures that we already know. Um, but this is different, you know, these are like animals. That's the difference. You know? That... Yeah, these are like mammals. <laughs> like, exactly. And that's, that's kind that's of really scary. Annoying. And the fact like... that they were always there as well. And they're just living further down. Um which makes you realise how yeah. fucking cool. Which once Deep again I don't like it, it's like the way they put it was really annoying, but I don't blame them for doing this. Like uh, they're not like they're not like devolved, they're not like um, accidents or like they're anything. They're they're just a natural creature that has evolved there, which is so annoying because you really want to just be like it was an ancient humanoid species that devolved into this creature, and you're going to be like seeing the ruins and that. But like, yeah. they were specifically like, no, <laughs> we are not doing that. Um, but um. I don't know. I still hope we get ruins, right? Yes, Deep down but like the, below the, the, the crawl the art, like the way it looks, it, like the implication of like more intelligence as well, though. That's also the scary thing, like eyes, mouth, things that we can like recognize. You know, I think they did talk about how the idea if of um, a crawler being an individual crawler is a lot has a lot more individuality than most of the glyphids. You know, and, it, and like, it's quite a simple like thing to do as well intelligence because in deep rock you could basically sum it up as it would run away from you right 
not many things run away from you or like you're smart enough to do that right <laughs> like some of them dig away right but like how many like if you approach they run away right like the hooli hoarder once you shoot it <laughs> like um, well specifically and, and it's the kind of thing that can be done smart, right halo's been doing halo's done this yeah. for t more than two decades right an enemy can be mm. intelligent enough to run into cover that is a very possible thing to do so that kind of thing as well you know in deep rock when enemies run it's because you feared them or because they are the kind of enemy that just um they you know like a grabber where if it you know is even is even attacking or fleeing mode um and it just goes away it but it doesn't actually know where it's going I, the crawl is the kind of thing that would actually seek really out cool. cover um you know the really cool thing if they could pull this off is blind sides like blind sights like it always like i don't know if they how they would do it like maybe it's like a meter where like there's a cone that like is of your pov and this creature like actively avoids being in that cone for as much time as possible so it's just like constantly lurking like mm. outside of your sight and you'll like catch a glimpse of it and it will scuttle off like stuff like that like if it in implies that it knows what it's doing then it'll be pretty fucking terrifying and cool um yeah, which um, is I want to hear, I want to hear it breathing like as well. You know, I want to hear it breathing. I want to hear it fucking sputtering blood out as I like, stomp on its chest. It yeah, like wheezing. I feel like it would wheeze. <laughs> <laughs> it's a kind of enemy that once you've killed it in like a normal fashion, you've killed it because you've just done enough damage to it. It it just it doesn't immediately just it doesn't immediately die. It like falls over and it, it you can like if you would walk over to it and just observe it, it would be like breathing and then eventually it would just it would like like die again you know it'll stop breathing and it'll go limp you know that kind of, that'll be sick but i, I don't I know because you know, it, it's really... the kind of creature you can't really tell how many they're expecting to like have at once that's is that it's like kind of creature because it yeah. looks like it could be the grunt type of a new like species but it, it also like goblin right yeah like yeah, goblins they... they're normally in pack they right, do. They're like quite they're... swarm like, but it's hard to imagine yeah. that as well. I mean, you already got the thing right because you know they've been resisting doing humanoid enemies, or not resisting. They've just been against it. But you know, now they're doing it. It's like, In yeah, it's humanoid, but you know, it doesn't move like a humanoid. Still, it's on. It's like cr it crawls. You know, and that's a very important thing because, and I respect that. Like the the attempt to still make a okay, humanoid enemy, and it, it it invokes the things that would be scary about finding a creature like that in deep rock but it's still you know constructed in a way where in a cave right yeah just yeah in a cave. Shit like that. Crawl... i mean it is literally gone um, yeah yeah well like i think wasn't it called like, descent the movie they watched right and it's like some bullshit like that like um i think so it's about some creature in a cave like that um but yeah just that got kind of fear like that's that's the thing yeah, i'm really right, looking forward descent. to because like i'm not a fan of horror Right? I don't. I don't like. I don't like horror movies or any of that shit. But I do like spooky stuff. That's why there's a pumpkin in the corner of my room, right? Like I. I, I like being a little bit spooky. And if in this uh, slightly silly deep rock game, um, there is a actual fucking demon spawn crawling on like the roof of the caves that hides whenever I see it, that's pretty damn spooky. I. I. I mean, it's pretty damn horror as well. But it's not taken too seriously because of the graphics. I, that falls under spooky. I like it. I really like like where you know they're prodding around even if it doesn't actually end up being like you know in the game at all or anything even close to it's in the game i love that it's on the table something like this has probably never been on the table for deep rock before right and would never be added to deep rock but because once again rogue core just frees them it was just such a good idea like i it's annoying the way they dealt with it right that they baited deep rock news and then they delivered this but like Oh, cool. Well, is, okay, that, that, is, what that, deep that is what happened. I don't think they were thinking that's it, that's what they were doing. That is what happened, though. <laughs> I, I had to take in yeah. what you said for a moment there. You're right. I don't think that's what they were trying to do, though, which speaks to the problem, by the way. Um, it speaks to an idea of, and forgive me even using the word, it does speak to an idea of tone deafness, right, that they, they didn't think anyone would be upset. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we've talked about it before. Um, yeah. That is a bit weird. They should have expected... A weird reaction um but they got it and you made me forget something that i was going yeah, to say a bit of like i think it was just a bit of like 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 i don't know blindness like they were like 
all right, this this news is so cool. Everyone's going to love this. When what everyone would have loved was a better season four, a quicker season four, and a season five soon, which it was none of those things. It was actually the opposite, uh, which but that was a whole thing. But like now that people have essentially gotten over that and or stopped playing because they weren't happy with it, um, now it's just people that are just excited for season five because it's finally here, right? People can start paying attention to that again. And Rokor, because... Um, I mean, at least out this year, right? That that t- makes the pill taste a little better. Yeah, we're about to get within this very... year, which we've already managed to get to the fourth month, like in a couple of days. So it times fucking flying. Yeah, man, it's not. It's <laughs> not. not... Here, but... Oh yeah, I don't like time flying. I don't. I don't like time flying by. But I do like getting closer to season five. Um, I do like. It. Yeah, uh, it's sort of it's a weird balance. It makes the passage of time very pleasant to deal with, <laughs> right? Deep Frog makes like, the passage like, of time yeah, my life a is, really weird aspect of my hard. life because uh, as much as I love it and, you know, so many times it is worth the wait. Sometimes, recent times, it hasn't been, let's be honest. But so many times it has been, yet so much actually does happen in the time between these updates. It's kind of it's kind of horrifying to think. I, and yes, it's because yeah. my my, un, my years at university are really short. I'll give them that. But the fact that I got through my entire year between um, season four and five, I mean, that makes sense when they're a year apart, but still, um, it is weird. <laughs> um, damn. I mean, I, I think... Mean, um, isn't it... Didn't you get through the entirety of university within between, like... Start of seasons uh, well, now, season one right? was well, <laughs> like, yeah, but season one was in November. I I would have started like um, late September is when I would have actually started going in, uh, the first year. Right. So, but yeah, pretty much though, pretty much. Um, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's kind of crazy. It's, it's interesting, but yeah, like I don't know. Which is why we're excited about a new game, it, right? Good. That's why a new game's cool because it's going to be yeah. so much. Not just not just so much in terms of like. The game will have a will obviously have a lot to offer because of how new it is, right? There's just gonna be so much they get out of that because it's yeah. a new game. But just obviously updates will be more frequent, and it's pretty simple. But I think it's just it's just the experience of of you know originally being a part of it, right? When it was early access, it's yeah. gonna be that again, right? Which was a pleasurable experience to put it lightly. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Plugged low, which uh, I'm always glad when it actually tells me about it. Just gonna make sure that's working. Why are you st- silently <laughs> staring at something? Okay, that is not. Whoa. I mean, you could have waited a few minutes. I think we're gonna, because I think we're gonna stop. <laughs> I think this is um. Six percent. Which is bullshit, considering it just told me it was fifteen percent, and now it's six. So fucking lying, motherfucking thing. Your your pewter is a is a fool. Your pewter. Yeah, but I think um I think we should wrap this up because I think this has been pretty good. But I think we're going to start to, I think we're going to start to be forcing ourselves pretty soon. Um, I can sense that coming. But I think aside from that, which is why it's a good time to end because I think sometimes we do that. Um, but yeah, still. I mean, look, there's nothing going on really, so it's not ba- not a bad, not a bad go. Although, just a, a check in, you know, has, yeah, check has in. a hang in, you know. Well, yeah. If if I'm right uh, though, and we do actually start seeing stuff in the next couple of weeks, that does mean the next episode, something something interesting should have happened by the next episode of this, hopefully. Um, if not, we'll be sitting here like a bunch of muppets with even less to talk I about. Don't, yeah, that would be <laughs> right? kind of awkward. So go ship, unlikely. go ship. To... Come on, I mean, we'll, we'll, uh, if we have to, we'll do. Some, we'll think of something. We'll do some old like kind of topic. I don't know what it would be. I don't know. Um, In, yeah, uh, the night, the night episode. Yeah, 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 no, oh, could the shanty's so bad. I'm I sorry. I'm won't. sorry. The shanty's bad, I'm man. Really I can't. I can't let it slide any longer. I gotta say it. The shanty sucks. Okay. Aside from that, um, so, oh god, I actually had like a really good like conclusive sentence to like throw in there. Um, I, I just sort of like a final say on the differences and similarities between the two. 
it, it's pretty clear to me that they're adopting all the right things, but they're also it's also clear that they're also taking advantage of it being a new game. And I think that kind of puts it in the, like that's the sentence really. It's taking all the right stuff from Deep yeah. Rock, but it's still taking advantage of being not Deep Rock, which which it wouldn't be able to if it was in Deep Rock, like it was originally going to be. So um... it just feels like they, you know. They've made, they've created this concoction over the last six years, right? Where it's like, there's a lot of good, there's also some bad, and they've just kind of like, like, all right, we'll just pluck the best parts we did over this time. We'll just take them out, and then we'll throw them into this new stew, and they're just going to try again. And they've got a really good fucking base, right? They've got all of the this good shit already in there. Um, they've got tons of experience now. They're better chefs than they were before, right, in this analogy. Um <laughs> And it's just like, hopefully, they add even better ingredients, right? Like, even better stuff. Like, they add a new feature that we never even thought of and that couldn't have been added to Deep Rock. Yeah, well, I um, hope, there's, and I hope like there's more than one of those things. I'm sure there will be. Um, like, I mean, an infinite pro- progression of sorts, right? Something like that being put in <laughs> for both, preferably. But, um, but like, in Rogue Core would be Rich. pretty sweet. Speak your um, shit. But, yeah, like... Um, I don't know and it i think it would just it'll also take the weight off deep rock a little bit right which i think is yeah. also quite nice but once it comes out people won't be like just like <laughs> delaying seasons <laughs> like they'll they'll be like all right i'm just gonna play road core until you get your shit together <laughs> right like something like that um but uh yeah i don't know the future is so bright but it is also fairly far away road core concerns Season five, any moment now, <laughs> right? Um, you know. All right, I, look, I need yeah. a piss, man. Okay, I need a piss. Um, and we're All not. Right. This is not. You know, we don't need to pause this, right? We're not going to pause this. Yeah. We're yeah. Done. So, um, you can join us though next on Monday for something. Monday the first. Of I, I don't know. I don't know what it's actually going to become. I don't know what Ty, I don't know if Tyree knows what he signed himself up for, but we actually haven't got any suggestions yet, which can happen. Those community posts can just get lost. Um, but either way, we'll come up with something. Tyler will draw something weird, hopefully. It's it, the, the idea, it sounded much more Halloween-esque than April Fool's, but who knows? We might just, we, we might just do something else entirely. I don't know. But we're going to do something on Monday, aren't we? A drawing stream of sorts. Hopefully. Um, what do you mean, hopefully? What could, what could stop that from happening? I don't know. My PC is an ancient piece of shit. Um, well, so, yeah. You mean, know, it, it's a gamble every time. I mean, you've got more than one reason to upgrade it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just don't have the money. I know. Uh, which, I mean, if I saved... Uh, we'll, we'll work out. Uh, we got until, like, December, November. That'll, that's enough time to um, figure something out. Yep. It's enough time for me to get all this urine out of my body. Okay. Um. No, it's not. <laughs> if you shut up, okay. It's it's over. It's over. Um. If you enjoyed this episode of Bad Vision Podcast, thank You're you. Over. First of all, please like, please subscribe, and if you want to stay on top of everything, do Road Call, and that's it. Just Ro- I don't know why I said Road Call first. <laughs> Firstly, Deep Rock first. Deep Rock and Road Call, and uh, then click the bell as well. Tyler will personally kiss all of you if you do that. Um. I was about to sneeze, and then I didn't sneeze. I need to piss so bad. Thank you for watching. (laughs) Goodbye.